thinking of other things that I've seen over there, other applications. But what happens over here is you have a coil with current in it, generated maybe by some battery, some power supply somewhere, some function generator, there's a current in it. And if, if this coil is in this external magnetic field, the coil will, can be made to spin. What would happen, what would happen if, yeah, it can be, it, and I'm saying it can be made to spin, because watch out. What happens if the magnetic field is up, and I have this coil like this, so that the current around the coil is this way. What would be the direction of the area vector for this coil? Down, right? Down like this, right? Yes. And the magnetic type of moment will be down. What would be the torque of the upward magnetic field exerted on this coil that has a downward magnetic type of moment? What would be the torque? There'd be no torque because it's on your arm. What's that? Wouldn't it be no torque because the. Wouldn't it be the, what? No torque because the mu is uh, this and then the magnetic field is up, so it's 180 degrees and sine of 180 is zero. Exactly. So the magnetic field is up, the magnetic dipole moment is down. So I got two vectors, one up, one down. Magnetic, magnetic field up, magnetic dipole moment down. The angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees. But the torque, I want the sine of the angle between them. And the sine of 180 degrees is zero. So it'll just sit there. Now, is it happy? It wants to. It wants to go like that, right? But it'll just sit there in equilibrium because the torque is zero. This is an equilibrium condition because the torque is zero, but it is called unstable equilibrium. It's sort of like um, you go to an amusement park. And there's a ride some, some ride like that and you happen to be here uh, let's say the ride is like this and you happen to be there right suppose you just happen to be there in some little cart and you're just sitting there you could you could be in equilibrium over there, right? There's a force of gravity acting this way. And this track is actually a normal force this way. And if the normal force is equal to the force of gravity, the sum of the forces will be zero. And that means that the acceleration will be zero. And if you are at rest, you'll stay at rest. So it's an equilibrium position. So this is a position of equilibrium. Because the sum of the forces is zero. Now, what happens if you get pushed a little bit <laughs> off from this equilibrium position? Then you just run away and you're not going to come back. Unstable equilibrium. What if you get pushed the other way? Shh, run away and you're not gonna come back. So this is a position of unstable equilibrium. If this cart is here, let me make this a little bit more dramatic. Again, you could have a situation where this thing is in equilibrium. The normal force is this way, the weight is this way, and if this normal force equals that, the sum of the forces is zero, your acceleration is zero, your velocity is constant, and if, if you're at rest, you stay over there. So that's an equilibrium position, because the sum of the forces is zero. So this is a position of equilibrium.
Now, if I, if you get pushed a little bit this way, right? You, like somebody pushes you, and then like they let go, you're gonna go back to the position of equilibrium. Or at least gonna go back to it, right? If somebody pushes you this way instead, and then they let go, you're gonna go back. So that's a position of stable equilibrium. It's equilibrium, equilibrium. This is unstable, that one is stable. What happens if you're here on this flat surface? You could have the normal, that way, the weight this way, and if these two are the same, the sum of the forces is zero. So, you know, that's a position of equilibrium. Now, if somebody pushes you to the right a little bit, well, you're not gonna run away and you're not gonna come back either. You'll just stay there. And if they push you the other way, here, well, it's still flat, so you're not gonna run away and you're not gonna come back either. So you're just gonna stay there. So this is a position of neutral equilibrium. They're all positions of equilibrium because for all of them, some of the forces is zero. So that's equilibrium. But this is unstable equilibrium. It wants to go down and minimize its height, but you know, it's like, oh, so, you know, I need somebody to blow on me and push me a little bit, right? And when that happens, it's just gonna go, minimize the energy, and it's not gonna come back. It'll just not come back. So this is unstable equilibrium. This is stable equilibrium here. It's like, no, don't push me up, I don't wanna go, but then it comes down. And then you push it the other way, no, that's the wrong way. And then it comes down when you leave it alone. Here you push it and it's like, I'm happy if you leave me here or there, I'm not gonna go further away or go back, I'm just as happy. Neutral equilibrium, stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium. So in this problem over here, if the external magnetic field is this way, right? And the loop is positioned like this, so that the current is in the clockwise sense as seen from above, like I look from above and it looks clockwise, then the area vector for this loop is down, right? Because my fingers go this way. So the magnetic dipole moment vector points down, but this vector pointing down, it's in the opposite direction to the magnetic field. The cross product of those two vectors is zero. So that's, you know, the sum of the torques is zero. So it's an equilibrium, rotational equilibrium. But, it, but that position is unstable rotational equilibrium. Because as soon as you move it just a little bit, it's gonna go, it's gonna swing, so that it makes the magnetic dipole moment line up with the magnetic field. <clears throat> if the magnetic field is up, and the current loop is like this, and the area vector, you know, the current is such that it's like this now, right, so that the magnetic dipole moment vector points out, then that's also zero torque. The magnetic dipole moment points in the same direction as the magnetic field, it's zero torque, so it's equilibrium. Now what happens if I move the loop to the right? It's not gonna have one, it doesn't need to come back over here. The torque is still zero, but the energy is still a minimum. So doing this would be like neutral equilibrium. And, right, uh, and in this case it was like that, and so if you let go, then it wants to go this way, so it seeks the lower, Okay, so that's that. Now, <clears throat> another thing in chapter 27 that I like to address is the following. So let me change gears a little bit <clears throat> um, and consider this. What if we have a set of oppositely charged parallel plates? So I'm going to make this, um, does it matter? Plus, 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 minus, 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 okay, like plus sigma, minus sigma. A set of you know, these are plates that are 
or we end it like this. One plate like that and another plate like this. Right? <clears throat> and uh, what if there are electrons over here? Okay. You know, they're negatively charged particles, right? The charge is minus E, minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, you know, some, some negative charge, right? And these electrons are coming in this way. You know, maybe I have an electron gun over here, there are six electrons going that way, and the electrons go that way. Uh, what will this set of plates do to those electrons? Uh, what do this set of oppositely charged parallel plates created this region? Electric An electric field pointing this way, right? From plus to minus? Yes? So that's an external electric field. And it's going to be uniform in the region of space between them, if these are large plates. So these electrons will come in, right? In this region, there's no electric field, right? So the electrons will come in. I think we did a lab, uh, something similar to this, right? And they'll come in undeflected, but what happens as soon as they enter this region here? Which way will they be deflected by that electric field? Towards the top. Towards the? Up, towards the positive. Right, so if there is, if that's all there is to it, they're gonna go like this. And maybe either hit over there or keep going like this, right? Depending on how fast they're coming in and how long the plates are. Let me ask you this way. What would have to be, what if I want these electrons to move straight, undeflected? I don't want them to go up or down or you know, just, just go straight with constant speed. And I, and I must have this charge plate in the picture. So what can I do? And the force of gravity is negligible compared to the electrical force. So I can't say, oh, the force is up due to the electric field, but the you know, mg is down and they'll cancel. No, not big enough. mg is not big enough. So what if I establish a magnetic field in this region in addition to this electric field? Which way would that magnetic field have to be pointing so that the resulting magnetic force on the electrons is opposite to the electrical force? Let's do the electrical force first. As soon as the electrons enter this region, what will be the direction of the electrical force? Which way? Electrical force, which way? Up, correct. What's the magnitude of that electrical force? Remember, this is like QV, right? Uh, QE, right? Since the electrons are negatively charged particles, right? The force, the electrical force acting on the electron will be in the opposite direction to the electric field that they're moving through. Since the electric field is pointing downward, the electrical force is gonna be up. So the magnitude of this electrical force Just E times E external. Little E, or I don't know if I should, if, if it's okay for me to use that notation. So the charge of the electron is like minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, right? So this number here is the E. And then you have the minus signs. Now, the magnetic force is given by this other expression. And remember that the electrons are negatively charged particles. So just so we don't forget, I'll do, do this, right? 
this is minus q. The velocity is v. Which way is the velocity vector pointing? Which way do I want them to go? Just to the right. Cross into what? What would have to be the direction of this magnetic field? I'm just going to put b over here. But then what is the direction of it? So that when I do all of this, which way do I want this magnetic force to be pointing if I want these electrons to go undeflected and go to the right? So if I need them to cancel the electrical force, the magnetic force has to be pointing down, right? So you tell me. What would have to be the direction of this magnetic field, external magnetic field, I'll emphasize that, so that to the right cross with that direction is going to give me down. Out of the board. Which way? Out of the board. Into or out? Out. OK, suppose it's out. If this is out, how much is right? cross out. So right first, cross, so out is this way. Which way is that? Down. Like down, that. right? So then this cross product will be down, but uh -oh. what's the negative of down? Uh -oh. Up, so it'll add to the electrical force. So it can't be out. It has to be in. into the board, right? Well, when in doubt, just do, do it like this, right? So if, if it's into the board, what is the cross product of to the right as the direction of the velocity vector with the magnetic field and into the board? So to the right, cross into the board. Which way is that? To the right first, cross into the board. That will be up. And so this cross product will be up. And what is the opposite of up? Down. So. That is what we want. We want a magnetic field that points, which way did we say? Into the board. So we want to fill this region in with a magnetic field that points into the board. And x is used to denote into. So this is B external into the board. And suppose I want those two forces, one pointing up, the, other, the electrical force pointing up, the magnetic force pointing down, suppose I want them to have the same magnitude. If they have the same magnitude, what will be the net force of the electron? Zero. And therefore, they're just, if the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. The net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. And that means that the velocity is constant. So they'll just keep on going straight. So. What is the relationship between the speed of the electrons and the magnitudes of the electric and magnetic fields that they have to go through so that the so that they move with a constant speed to the right in the same direction, zero acceleration, zero net force? Oh, not that. So what I need to do in that case is the following. Well, first I have to erase this thing. 